good health especially especially uh, women's health is most important parameter which measures the healthcare system in the society so today we have with us dr uh, kavita lakshmi ishwaran she is a senior consultant obstetrician and gynecologist over 20 years of experience she is a subject matter expert in women's health i will welcome uh, dr kavita to our channel digital wellness thank you so much thanks and uh, thank for giving your precious My time pleasure. with us My and pleasure. dr manjula yeah dr yeah. kavita you yeah. know uh, the current scenario and the health it is taking toll i wanted to ask you the adolescent the mm-hmm. children at the early age they are getting their menarche mm-hmm. and what are the implications of early menarche on their physical mental and you know uh, emotional development okay yeah dr manjula early menarche menarche is also called precocious puberty and we call it precocious puberty when uh, menarche sets in before the age of 9 years some cutoffs are 10 years but the latest cutoffs are uh, below 9 years now to understand uh, what is uh, precocious puberty and what are the causes of precocious puberty we need to know how the axis works so there is something called the hypothalamo pituitary ovarian uterine axis in women so in this um, you know you will be able to understand that uh, this is the uterus and these are the ovaries now this is under a higher control of the hypothalamus mm-hmm. and the pituitary gland now these send in uh, you know uh, gnrh and they they are gonadotropin releasing hormones which send signals towards the ovaries and the ovaries start you know producing eggs every month from the time of menarche and then each month the egg if it is not fertilized you get your menstrual cycle now since we are dealing with uh, pre- precocious puberty i'll just go into that so what happens is there are two causes of precocious puberty it could either be because of a central cause or it could be because of a local cause okay. or a peripheral cause we call it mm-hmm. so when it is a central cause it could be because of any um, tumors in the brain or the spinal cord or any injury or radiation to the brain or the spinal cord or any of the um, hormonal um, imbalances created by genetic defects like uh, mccain albert syndrome or mm-hmm. um, you know it can be because of endocrine problems like hypothyroidism or congenital adrenal hyperplasia or it could be because of certain like hypothyroidism now um, when there are problems in at the central level like i told you in either the hypothalamus or the pituitary or the uterine ovarian axis then uh, an early menarche can be triggered mm-hmm. now there is also this organ when i spoke about congenital adrenal hyperplasia mm-hmm. the adrenal glands are also involved in this okay. so adrenal glands are very small uh, glands which mm-hmm. are placed just above the kidney Okay. okay now when it comes to the peripheral causes we have to look around causes here so it will be either a tumor or an estrogen producing tumor or a cyst in the ovary mm-hmm. or it could be because of uh, the same mccain albright syndrome which is again a genetic disorder mm-hmm. creating a hormonal imba- imbalance both at the central and at the peripheral okay. level or it could be because of any creams or um emollients used which has more estrogen in it okay. so anything that can trigger estrogen uh, estrogenism in the system can cause these kind okay. of problems reason ma'am like you know we got to know so much of okay. early menarche um i've heard if they get early menarche the growth uh, stops and uh, some of the belief that you know parents uh, some of the co- cause of concerned area where parents need to see the gynecologist uh, and some of the hygienic uh, tips if you can throw some light on that that will be good okay. yeah. see um when they are into an early menarche they are at a younger age where uh, you know they don't understand the uh, you know things well because they don't have a peer around them to explain to them as to 
what is going on dictated with all the growth changes so uh, those children or adolescents go through a growth spurt much earlier than their peer so initially the growth is rapid but what happens is the bone matures much faster than what it should you know so the bone maturity and the you know the growth spurt is also faster so they they are taller for the peer till that particular point of time till their bone matures but after that they remain at that level Sorry. whereas the other children would have a later menarche who have a later menarche they tend to you know uh, grow later so finally when you see they are a little more lesser in height and you know in their okay. growth pattern compared to the okay uh, you know children of their peer mm-hmm. now coming to the social or uh, the psychological changes that they go through uh, because they are uh, you know a lesser percentage of children who have attained early menarche and they don't have their friends to discuss with because the other children are still smaller if they don't have their parents or they have a good counselor to explain to them what are the changes that they are going to go through then it becomes difficult for for them okay mm-hmm. so they tend to get uh, you know get distracted fast mm-hmm. their intellectual quotient can be a little lesser mm-hmm. because their attention at that point of time would be to the opposite uh, sex or they could they may their uh, their needs and requirements uh, psychologically because of the hormonal changes will be totally different from the children mm-hmm. of their peer okay. so they tend to have uh, an inquisitiveness to certain things mm-hmm. which are much earlier than the peer so what happens is they tend to get involved in substance substance abuse mm-hmm. or they get involved in uh, you know their affinity towards the opposite partners mm-hmm. i mean opposite sex much faster so they have to be constantly <coughs> counseled by the parents especially mm-hmm. the mother mother is the one who would understand the most important thing and they should also be counseled if re- if required be counseled by a um, you know um, <coughs> by a counselor mm-hmm. and uh, if it is much earlier than what it should be at they should also have a consultation with a pediatric endocrinologist so that they will also be able to tell them uh, what to expect and how to go bring down these changes okay. or postpone these changes to okay. a later uh, onset okay and yeah. some of the hygienic tips if you can give yeah. uh hygienic tips again how to you know <laughs> deal with their periods yeah. and um, you know what are the things that they need to use mm-hmm. that they need to wash the area it mm-hmm. shouldn't be you know drying up the right kind of um, you know sanitary pads needs to be used all that the best uh, thing that Uh, you know somebody can monitor is at the home level so that should be by the mother yeah. so using uh, disposable good sanitary pads of course we cannot recommend menstrual cups to yeah. the young children okay. so sanitary how pads how often they need to change and yeah. you know if, uh, how much uh, flow should be expected yeah. so some children have more flow because they have anovulatory bleeds so mm. they tend to have more flow okay. and uh, we need to look into subtle changes that they are going through in terms of pain during periods mm-hmm. we should tell them to let us know if there is pain and evaluate it because okay. uh, some mothers tend to feel it's a natural thing but then they yeah, might yeah. have cysts they might have other problems yeah. in the ovary okay. so that has to be uh, looked upon okay. hygiene is basic hygiene wash the area frequently okay. with ordinary soap and water okay. no need to use too much of the okay. uh, you know other mm-hmm. cleansers mm-hmm. or anything like that okay. change of panties and mm-hmm. sanitary pads mm-hmm. frequently that should be more than enough okay yeah. so yeah. then anything required they will come and see they can the, yeah uh, they can come and see the obstetrician also okay yeah. uh, thank you kavita that was really a nice understanding of you know early why this early menarche and yeah. the causes and the effect of it now uh, since we covered on the adolescents i want to talk about uh, women at their age of 25 to say 40 to 45 where they are in the peak of their career as well as their you know home front where they play multiple roles as a mother wife you know sisters and in the career they will be growing at the same Correct. time work life balance it's eating them 
and their health especially uh, pertaining to the fertility and hormonal okay. imbalance okay um I, what is your word of wisdom for that whether a lady of that age group because this is the reproductive age group mm-hmm. you know if you call take it from 25 to 40 years okay. it's the reproductive age mm-hmm. group so mm-hmm. that is the age group which has the most challenging problems because they have to shoulder a responsibility both in their workplace exactly. and they have to shoulder a responsibility at the home front yes. and they have to always be there for their family whatever it might yes. be and for a woman it has to be a multitasking kind of a situation where they 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 will not be at most of most often they will not be able to be in a situation where they can handle everything in a very perfect manner okay. so the first and foremost thing here is since we are dealing with an international women's day i would say first take care of your own health okay so physical mental and psychological okay. health so that you can shoulder all these responsibilities together right. there are a lot of hormonal changes that happens mm-hmm. so after marriage there are a lot of hormonal changes that happens then after you have while you are pregnant you have a lot of hormonal changes mm-hmm. then after delivery you have a lot of hormonal changes then to raise up a child mm-hmm. uh, it, it, there are, there are a lot of challenges there right. uh, with the kind of scenario where we don't have uh, good people to look after being a nuclear family mm-hmm. you know you don't have enough members in the family to look after after um the child and mm-hmm. leaving them with uh, people caretakers or maids mm-hmm. or whatever it it is a very challenging thing because half the time your mind is at home okay. uh, thinking how my child whether my child has uh, fed or i mean has been fed or not and on the other side there is a challenge of growing in your career yeah, like yeah, you yeah, said yeah. so due to this stress mm-hmm. i see a lot of women going through multiple hormonal changes okay. and this is the time where newer problems set in like hypothyroidism or okay. an early onset of diabetes an early onset of hypertension or an early onset of menstrual problems okay. uh, they can be affected by fibroids they can be affected by endometriosis they okay. can be affected by uh, other uh, hormonal changes mainly pcos is PCOS, uh, yes. is the one which is catching up mm-hmm. and this is all related to the lifestyle right. that we lead so we tend to women uh, we tend to over do things at home we tend to overdo things at workplace we try to balance both but sometimes it doesn't happen so what my advice would be is to do uh, the best thing at the best possible time the best way you can but at the same time try to just strike that physical mental balance of course the hereditary problems we can never uh, you know change that is something which we are born with i call it our assets we cannot do away with it yeah. but uh, the onset of that can be postponed mm-hmm. by having regular uh, you know Correct. exercises following a healthy lifestyle like yeah. yoga pranayama meditation okay. go for walking mm-hmm. do the uh, right kind of exercises keep at least half an hour or uh, 45 minutes for yourself for and then you know divide the you know work home balance and strike the balance right mm-hmm. and have a good schedule for yourself take help wherever you need mm-hmm. so uh, either in the workplace of course you can't take help but at the home front yes you can definitely do that okay. now coming to pcos uh, or uh, again all these uh, problems are adding on to mm-hmm. infertility or subfertility yes. however we can call it mm-hmm. so this pcos or certain things which are uh, not only genetic but also acquired they are also acquired by our lifestyles mm-hmm. so again it is because of the junk food mm-hmm. and the kind of um, sedentary lifestyles that mm-hmm. we lead mm-hmm. and uh, the overeating the eating of uh, basically i would call it a westernization of our indian mm-hmm. food and indian culture mm-hmm. that has actually triggered this mm-hmm. of course there is a major genetic element which okay. i don't want to go mm-hmm. deeply into okay. Okay. so i would suggest you all to follow a healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. and um do it at the earlier stage mm-hmm. uh, from say menarche onwards mm-hmm. or uh, as a child when you are doing so much exercise continue that and mm-hmm. keep time for yourself okay
Wow, that's really nice. I think we women play multiple roles and uh, self-love and self-care is what doctors advise is. And it's okay to, you know, spend that quality time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. And um, I think we have covered in the middle age with the career and work-life balance. Oh, I want to ask you, uh, you know, even the um, menopause, People when they hit the you know, early menopause is also happening and uh, some of the hormonal imbalances and why, uh, how is this uh, menopause affects on the hormonal imbalance and how long this menopause lasts? Okay. See, menopause is a cessation of the menstrual cycle or the menstru menstruation per se. And uh, it varies in women. Some women just have an abrupt menopause which might happen in just six months time. They just have one odd irregular period and then it just happens. Or some women uh, have a gradual menopause. Mm -hmm. So the timeline, I mean, the time varies from say about six months to two years. Okay. Most women take about at least a year's time mm -hmm. where there's a slow cessation of ovulation and a slow cessation of the periods. Mm -hmm. Now this is a very challenging phase because estrogen is considered as a brain tonic. Okay. okay. So for a woman who has been used to a waxing and waning of estrogen mm -hmm. in during every period cycle, mm -hmm. estrogen, if you see the first half of the cycle is always a very pleasant time. Correct. It's usually women get okay. all this pro, uh, premenstrual syndromes yes. and other things in the second half of the cycle okay. when progesterone goes up and drops. Okay. So um, estrogen uh, thus plays a very good role in your psychological emotional mm -hmm. and uh, you know f physical balance for a lady mm -hmm. and it is required for all the functions in your body basically mm -hmm. so other than the brain uh, you know the sanctity that it holds for mm -hmm. a lady mm -hmm. that's why you see perimenopause Puzzle women very mm -hmm. dull and depressed mm -hmm. and very they go through a phase of agitation mm -hmm. they go through a phase of frustration at that point because estrogen slowly declines in the body okay, oh, okay. but this is because of a waxing and waning of mm -hmm. estrogen mm -hmm. but once they are used to that mm -hmm. being in a particular mode mm -hmm. after a while mm -hmm. uh, after they tied over the perimenopausal or menopausal phase okay. then they are calm because okay. they know how to be without mm -hmm. estrogen also okay. Okay. so okay. without estrogen what happens is other than the emotional stress that they go through the bone requires the collagen requires the estrogen okay. the um, the uh, what do you call it uh, all the organs in the body require because. the bone strength mm -hmm. bone for its metabolism requires estrogen your sexual function requires estrogen okay. so all this for them to understand that they have to live without it it mm -hmm. takes time Thanks. and they go through hot flushes they go through so much of emotional turmoil they start feeling insecure okay. for several reasons okay. so this is the time they need to occupy themselves in things that they like you know okay. like they are inclined to music mm. uh, learn music if they like to paint they paint mm. they yeah, connect with old okay. friends so that they feel nostalgic about their uh, past or whatever mm. uh, mm. friendships or whatever so that is the time we tell them to indulge in those kind of things okay. um, if the hot flushes or the the menopausal symptoms are very severe you can give them soya preparations okay. i wouldn't recommend hrt if okay. menopause is after the age of say 40 40 or 45 i don't think that should be given because it has its own implications okay. and uh, other than that uh, menopause needs to be tidied over by again a healthy lifestyle like yoga, pranayama, mm -hmm. exercise. Exercise like you know, you okay. know, creates a lot of positive mm -hmm. uh, endorphins and ad adrenaline release which gives them that strength at that point and the weight bearing exercises really help their bones to maintain strength mm -hmm. they need to be given supplements of calcium mm -hmm. that's more than enough if they have an associated anemia it can be corrected mm -hmm. if they need psychological or social support then 
you know a good uh, peer of friends or a good counselor Correct. like you you know they are the people who can really you know help them out at that point uh, their children can be a little more considerate towards them their husbands should be a little more family should basically be a very supportive and not just think why are they why yes. is she shouting so howling them. out yes. her. because that's the change she feels mm. and that is the time she is vulnerable for uh depression mm-hmm. or whatever so Correct. the kind of support we can give her and the kind of uh, lifestyle that changes at that point is what uh, you know will help her sail through menopause sail into menopause okay. very nicely thank you dr kavita thank it was you really nice uh, conversation and we got to know so much of information thank and you so much once again thank wish you, you happy women's day wish you and you. when it comes to a uh, self care and self love we are always miser we think are we selfish no i don't think so so as doctor says giving a uh, highest priority to your health is most important because if you are have uh, healthy your whole family is healthy a woman is healthy whole community and country is healthy. an insightful so, conversation with dr kavita lot of take away i'm sure all these tips will be helpful to one and all Stay tuned for more interesting topics related to women and women's health during this week-long International Women's Day celebration at Digital Wellness. Like, subscribe and share. Also leave your comment on what you think of this story. So, on this Women's Day, I wish everyone happy and healthy and uh, prosperous year and uh, years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.